So uh, Bjorn Buckwalter uh, started this project, but I've joined him on it, and uh, we're co-maintaining it now. Um, so uh, dimensional basically makes sure that you can't add a length to a mass or make any mistakes like that, but you can still multiply a, a force times a distance and get an energy. Um, why check those dimensions? Because if you don't, you can screw things up, uh, crash into Mars, or run out of gas. Um, once you put those dimensions into the code, instead of having a double with a comment on it that says kilograms, you actually have a mass. And so the type system requires the source code to say what units you're using whenever you take a raw double and you want to turn it into a mass, and vice versa when you're taking it back out again. Um, there are a few other existing solutions for this problem out there, uh, the units and the UOM plugin library. Um, the UOM plugin one is especially interesting because it solves some problems that this one doesn't with like code that's highly polymorphic in dimension, and I'll talk about that a bit later. Um, so why pick this one? Uh, we do have some, some good things. The types reflect the dimensions of your quantities, not their units. So. You don't have different types to represent lengths in meters and length in, lengths in feet. You just have one type to represent lengths, um, which is convenient. Uh, we have uh, good type level representations for dimensions, and we also have a good term level representation for dimensions that we use to have uh, relaxed the static typing when you don't want it and just have a quantity of any type, which can be really useful for uh, taking user input. And uh, we have dimensional arithmetic, so we have dimensionally checked flavors of all the arithmetic operators from the prelude that make sure that you can't take the sign of three feet because what's that, and <laughs> and, and so forth. Um, we have a whole bu whole long list of uh, convenient quantity synonyms, so that instead of having to spell out those dimensions in the way that the system represents them. You can instead just say capacitance double, and you've got a capacitance value that's stored in a double. Uh, we have good pretty printing, and we have exact conversion factors, even when they involve uh, radians and degrees, using a, another library I developed called ExactPy. Um, we have barely any dependencies, and you don't need to have template Haskell or any uh, solver plugins to get started or even to define new units. Um, things we don't have are custom dimensions. So you can't have frogs per square mile. And you have to deal with the fact that we don't treat angles. We treat angles as dimensionless. Almost everyone agrees that they are, but there's some dispute over it, and it's kind of more useful from an engineering perspective to treat them as having a dimension. But I don't know. Either way, you, you can't choose the opposite, because what, what dimensions there are is baked into the library, and you can't make any new ones. Um, and uh, so for the same reason, uh, CGS electrostatic units are treated as their equivalents in the SI basis. So three centimeters is a length, but not a capacitance. And if you want it to be both, you're out of luck. Um, we don't have uh, torsors for absolute temperatures or times, but we're working on that. And we don't have a functor instance, which we intentionally left out, because if you f map plus 3 to, to a length, then you've just broken the scale invariance property. And you needed to know what unit it was in, but you didn't tell us. Um, we don't have good benchmarks. We have only a very few. So how fast it is, we don't really know. It, if we played enough tricks, we could probably get it to be just as fast as the ordinary arithmetic, because it's just a new type wrappers over it. But it, there might not be with some of the crazy type hackery that's going on right now. Um, and we don't have a solver plugin like the one that Adam Gundry's uh, UOM plugin library has, which means you can if you have code that's really polymorphic over dimensions, you can work yourself into a corner where the system can't prove things like the one that's written on the screen, where we can see that something divided by u times u is equivalent to that same thing divided by x times x, because the u's and the x's go away, but the system can't see that. In Adam Gundry's system, it could see that. And so we're sort of trying to borrow that idea and bring it into this universe. 
Um, so examples of how to use it, uh, it's, on, it's on package now, so you can just install it the ordinary way. And uh, here's the example word problem that's in the readme file. If the car travels at uh, 60 kilometers an hour for one mile, then 50, and then 40, and then 30, how many minutes did it take to go the four miles? What's the average speed of the car? And uh, just to show getting it out of the dimensional universe, how many seconds does it take rounded up to the next whole second? So to solve that, uh, you've got to um, import the library, obviously. The easiest way to, since all the math operators have names that clash with the ones from the prelude, it's probably best to uh, not implicitly have the prelude imported and, and instead to import the, the dimensional flavored version of it. Um, and then we also pulled some extra units because the problem is in miles and that prelude only brings in the uh, SI units. So if we have the one and we want to make it into the length of one mile, then that's what that uh, time squiggle operator is for. So we can say that the length of the leg is one mile. Um, with the time squiggle squiggle operator, it's the whole thing, but lift it up to operate it on functors so we can use that to have the list of 60, 50, 40, 30. Um, we have uh, all the prefixes, so kilometer is another unit that's kilometers, and kilometer divided by hour is another unit that's kilometers per hour. Um, the times and divide operators work uh, both on units and on quantities, but you can't multiply a unit by a quantity using the times operator. You've got to multiply one by the, by the unit and then multiply that, multiply the quantities by each other. Uh, so how long does the journey take uh, as a time? So we want to divide the leg length by each of the speeds in turn to figure out how long each leg took and then sum them up. Um, what's the average speed? It's uh, four times the leg length because there were four legs divided by how long the journey took. Um, for the numbers uh, zero through nine, we've got underscore aliases of those numbers that are dimensionless flavors of them. So underscore four isn't a double, it's a dimen or isn't a num, it's a dimensionless num. Um, but that's just equivalent to saying four times squiggle is one times the leg length over the time of the journey. So if the number was bigger than nine or not an integer or negative, you could, you could use that way. Um, the underscore zero one is especially interesting because it's polymorphic in dimension two. The underscore one through underscore nine are dimensionless things, but underscore zero has every dimension because no matter what the dimension, it, no matter what unit you're using, zero is still the same, so you don't have to say. Um, and how many whole seconds did it take? We've got to use the divide squiggle operator to get the uh, time double and convert it back into a double by having it be expressed in seconds. And then we can use the ordinary uh, ceiling operator. Um, going on to just show a, a quick, more complicated example, here's one from the autopilot I'm writing where it takes a whole list of raw doubles from, uh, that it got over the network from the flight gear flight simulator and converts them into a record with where they're all dimensionally typed. So the system is making me here say what units like here is, is talking to me in. So this is the only place where those units get mentioned. They're not in comments in the whole rest of the code. Um, you can define custom ones, but apparently I didn't write a slide about that, so sorry. Uh, <laughs> trust me, it's in there. Um, what, what else have we got going on? We've, we just released uh, another library, uh, dimensional code data, that includes all the, uh, the code data. Well, not all, but the commonly used uh, code data recommended values for physical constants, uh, which is convenient. Um, the ExactPy library basically provides an exact representation for uh, rational multiples of integer powers of pi, um, but it also provides a full uh, floating instance by having an approximate case for when you uh, add pi to two, for example, and it can't, the result can't exactly be represented in the exact representation. Um, we use this for tracking the conversion factors between units because when you get to angular units, it's important. Um, uh, 
We also have uh, dimensional wrappers, or I think in these two libraries, they're both inherently depending on dimensional now for the uh, international standard atmosphere and the international geomagnetic reference field. Uh, there's probably more things like this out there that we should have dimensionally flavored versions of. Uh, we're working on having coordinate transformations and things like that. Uh, coming up, we're going to have uh, version 1.1 with even better support for dynamic quantities so that the parser that we're working on in the background can, can improve. Um, we're going to have uh, improvements to the unit name system that are needed for that too. And what's really exciting, at least to me, is we're going to have uh, fixed point quantities. So you can have things with underlying integer representations, but still and use units other than the SI base units, whichever scale is appropriate for your application, and have that all be tracked too. Um, and we have a user manual, which is good. So the fixed point support. Right now, um, we have the quantity type. Uh, the dimensional type takes a variant, and the two variants are quantities and units that can be either metric or not. Um, the fixed point type system, to change that, basically we add a type level exact pi scale factor to the quantity case that says what the scale factor is between the representation that you have stored and the representation of that quantity in SI uh, base units. Uh, so S quantity, scaled quantities with an S becomes like that, and quantity becomes a uh, type synonym for quantities that where the scale factor is one. So if you're using floating point, then you're always using quantity, and your scale factor is always one, because for the most part, if you're using doubles, like the exponents can get so big and so small that all physical quantities you could conceivably care about can be stored in the SI base units. Um, if you're using fixed point types, then you'd be using the scaled quantities. Um, so for example, uh, right, this would be uh, Q15 and 16 would be the type of, uh, of <laughs> dimensionless numbers that are stored as uh, themselves divided by 2 to the 15th. So numbers from negative, negative 1 to positive almost 1. Um, this would be angles split where the whole circle is split into 2 to the 16th segments. So um, you could have a, an integer sine function that went from one of these types to the other, and everything would be checked. Uh, with template Haskell, it can be even better because you don't have to spell out these insane types. Uh, we're still working on this, but once we have that parser finished, you'll be able to use uh, code like this instead, where you can say that your velocities are stored in centimeters per second and in 16s, and instead of having that in comments, the system actually understands what you're saying, and if you want to write, a, write down a speed like 5.3 miles per hour, we can convert that for you and store it into that type of uh, velocity variable. Uh, we've got fi fixed point arithmetic operators that like addition and negation are really easy. We've got uh, epsilon, which would be the smallest representable non-zero value in whatever type that you're talking about. Uh, we've got, so it's basically just the new type wrapper wrapped around the number one. Um, we've still got zero, but instead of just being any quantity, now it can be any scaled quantity because it still doesn't matter. Zero is still zero. Um, we've got a time squiggle operator that's got a, a crazier type, where if the the value you're bringing in is a is a real frac and the thing you're going to is an integer, then we can figure out how to scale it for you. Um, we've got to change the scale, which you have to do usually after you multiply or just if you're wanting to change from between two subsystems that talk in different representations. And we've got an approximate one that goes via a floating point type of your text. Um, we're working on linear algebra support, but since I think I'm over time, I'll not talk about this slide extensively, but keep going. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> we're not short. Uh, 
So if you want to do the same thing, but for linear algebra, which would be really great for control engineering applications, then you need to ta start tracking for uh, vectors of length n, you need to track n dimensions. And for matrices, you don't need to track n times n dimensions. You instead need to track uh, n plus m minus 1 dimensions, because it turns out that's as many actual ones as you can choose freely and still be able to multiply the matrix by anything. Uh, we have a library that models all of this, but without that type checker plugin uh, support that Adam Gundry built in his thing, it isn't really that useful because the type checker, or can because GHD can only check the types of uh, monomorphic uses of it. So if you specify exactly what the matrices you're talking about, it can check that you didn't screw up. But it can't check uh, polymorphic code, like a code for a general uh, common filter, because when the variables are still up in the air, it can't do the sort of reasoning that I showed before about figuring out that, that multiplying and then dividing by the same thing is doesn't leaves a dimension unchanged. Uh, if we can get that fixed up, it should be really interesting. Um, if anyone has any suggestions or pull requests, then it's all on GitHub, and the address is there. And the slides will be up with the talk. So thanks. Um, anyone what have questions? Dimensional? Dimensional? Yeah. Yeah? So if you've done any work with um, iterable arithmetic or error analysis? So right now, it um, can wrap any type for which there is num and floating instances. So uh, Edward's not here, but he has a, a library that does interval arithmetic. And you can wrap this around that and use all the stuff that he already built to figure out your, your error bounds. Aside from that, no, we haven't done anything at all on that sort of numerical work besides be able to piggyback off of other people's. All, all it is is new type wrappers to make sure that you don't screw up the dimensions and that you uh, tell us the units. Yeah? How do you recommend dealing with absolute times and temperatures? So make your own new type wrappers for now, <laughs> again. But um, we're trying to have sort of a generalized one that uses the uh, symbol data kind to to let you know that all the, bring all the math with you that comes and not bring the other math, but not be so concerned about, uh, or be able to generalize over that pattern somehow. Yeah, you don't have money. No money, no, no, no dimension for money. Uh, it's been requested a couple times, but it's tricky because the units for money aren't really units in the sense that like their their values change all the time, how they're related to each other changes all the time. So we're not sure what to do about money in the absence of a more general system that lets you make uh, custom dimensions because probably dollars and yen don't have the same dimension. They're actually two separate dimensions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes? So whenever you're operating with these quantities, you shouldn't need to care what units they're expressed in. And if you just use the arithmetic operators that are provided, you can't screw up. Like Those types don't allow you to accidentally take a dependence on what units the values are represented in. But if there was an fmap operator that lets you just operate on the double that we have stored under the new type wrapper, then you'd be able to pass it a function that did care. Like, you'd be able to just add two to the value. And what that would do would depend on whether we have the two, whether we have the value stored in feet or meters. And so that would let you sort of bring down this whole house of cards. Yeah, I'll back up. Right, so speeds is a, 
from the previous slide is a list of velocities. So that F map is uh, at the type of list, not at the type of velocity. Okay, thanks guys. Um, Greg, I don't know how to turn this recorder off, but I'll let you, since it's your computer.